Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Hey, can you go ahead and say your name and your age for me? Um, my name is Jahi, and I am 22 years old. Hi, Jahi. Um, so we're here today to talk about colorism. Um, for me, colorism means that you are judging someone or creating systemic disadvantages towards people who have a certain complexion. And so in our society, in our world, it's typically people who have darker skin or closer to dark or more African descent skin having less privilege and less advantage and less um, positive views um, from society compared to lighter skinned folks. It's not as much now, but definitely when I was younger. Um, being impacted by colorism at a young age definitely kind of hurt my self-esteem in many ways because despite having a dark-skinned mother and a lighter-skinned grandmother who was very supportive of me being dark-skinned and didn't say anything derogatory to me for being dark-skinned, when you have more time in school and people are teasing you and making fun of you for being darker-skinned, you have people much older than you who are making fun of you for being dark-skinned and bullying you because of your skin color, that makes that really causes you to feel some type of way about yourself. And even now, I still have to kind of move past and move beyond some of the seeds that were planted when I was younger because of the fact that I spend so much time being told that my darker skin wasn't good enough or being shown that my, my darker skin wasn't good enough and less time being told, oh, your skin is beautiful, your complexion is beautiful. And even now, I wonder where exactly it's coming from when people say, oh, well, I like your dark skin. Is it because you genuinely like my dark skin or is it more like a fetish exoticism that comes along with the compliments? An example, you know, as little kids, um, being told that, oh, you're so dark that when you turn the lights off, they're gonna, then nobody's going to see you. You know, things like that. Um, this nickname comes to mind. I got Blackie Mackie was a nickname I got when I was in third grade. Um, and I think in second, well, second through fifth grade, that was my nickname because I was dark-skinned. And ironically being told that by darker-skinned people. So it was almost like some self-hate going on. And and it's and then even in media or in like TV shows, most of the darker skinned people I would see, like dark skinned black men that I would see, you know, they were in films, they were in movies, but they were sex symbols. You know, I very rarely saw dark skinned people that were just regular schmegular people who weren't necessarily sex symbols and these hot people, you know. So and Again, family allowed me to have more positive messaging for being darker skinned, but the familial messaging and the school social messaging just couldn't cancel, it canceled each other out in a sense. I still have more negative than positive messaging. I think that for black men, because I can't speak for other people of color, I can only speak for black people um, definitively. I think for black men who are darker skinned, you have like these binaries. I think that you're either um, sex symbol, fetishized, you know, white people might consider you, like, you know, the mandingo kind of complex going on, like this dark, mysterious man, strong, you know, sex symbol. And the other one is just this ugly, unattractive, you know, person. There's no in between. There's It's either your sex symbol or you're just ugly. So I feel like when I hear that line, I think about that binary. Um, I think about the fact that perhaps before Biggie got big and he became like this rap hip hop legend, people probably gave him crap for being dark skinned. And now that he's older, um, when, he, when he was older and he became Biggie Smalls, B-I-G, he most likely gained more success and more positive views because he, was, he had status. So I also want to amend that to not just sex symbol, but just status in a sense. Like like it's like there's never people that like darker skinned people that just exist. I mean now there's more imagery of darker skinned folks existing and being complex, but it usually is for women. I very rarely see like darker skinned black men or boys that are kind of complex. I think 
think it makes a difference because I'm more confident about being darker skinned. I think that when I was younger, I had so much negative messaging that I kind of let it get to me. And even though I still have some self-esteem issues, like for example, if I'm dating, you know, people of the same race or of different races, will I be exotified or shunned because of my skin tone? But as, as far as self-image goes, I have no desire to be lighter skinned. I'm proud of being darker skinned. And I'm also proud of, of, of having this complexion because it's, because I've come a long way since then. And I think that had I not, had I had positive messaging about being darker skinned throughout my life, then I most likely would have um, probably not have had the issues I had, have had to kind of reconcile and work through as a later teenager and an adult. Well, I feel like acknowledging a system of oppression or acknowledging a system of pain requires people to go deep inside themselves and reflect. And I think that we teach our young boys not to do that. And, you know, not even, not just with colorism, but with any other ism or thing in our life. You know, we, we kind of teach boys to suppress pain and to not focus so much on emotions, be more, or be rational, don't focus on the past, don't focus on this, this kind of stuff. So in order for more men, darker skinned black men or lighter skinned black men to submit anything to the essay contest or to talk about colorism, you'd first have to reteach and unlearn this whole idea of suppressing emotion. Because, and also we don't have introspection. I find that introspection is something that is taught for um, young girls and women, but not for men. You know, this idea of looking inside oneself and unpacking the different parts of self. That's not something that we teach our young boys. And for me, being darker skinned, I've had to be more introspective of the messages I received in my upbringing. But I don't really, that's not really something that most guys I know think about. I do find that colorism is multicultural. And I also find that Ironically, I've received more positive messages about being darker skinned from people that weren't black. Be you know, for example, going to a school like UNO, there are a lot of international students from the Middle East, Asia, Europe, South America, and most of them are, you know, coming from very diverse backgrounds. So when it comes to darker skin, that's not something that they necessarily are like, oh my God, your skin is ugly. Those are the ones, that, 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 that was the first time that I received positive messages about being darker skinned, being from in a multicultural environment. But because I received such negative messaging about being darker skinned from my peers as a grade school student, I, f I began to be very suspicious of at positive messages because with the anti-blackness that comes to it, I often wonder how much of the positive commentary I got from other races came from being fetishized. You know, oh, your skin is dark, because of some exotic relief we have of black people. And also, would you date me is another thing. You know, mm -hmm. my skin is dark, my skin is beautiful. Okay, that's cool, but would you date me? That's what I begin to wonder. And that's probably what resonates with me the most. Will you date me? And if you date me, will it be for the right reasons? Will it be because you see me as a person or is it because you have some racial fetish that you're trying to live out?